Welcome, guys. We are here on Thursday evening, Friday morning for some of you for a community call. We are going to have a recap of some of our performance metrics, some of the things we've been working on, and we're going to kind of get on to some of the stuff that we're really focusing on at StakeDAO for our upcoming roadmap. One of the things that we've been seeing lately is huge increase in interest for our option strategies. Hubert, would you like to, to talk a little bit about those? Uh, yes. Happy to have you. Uh, thanks everyone for being here. Glad to answer any question on the option strategies. Maybe on the alpha drop, uh, now it's been quite some time since we haven't released new option strats and still we saw consistent growth over like uh, three different strats. But we, we used this time actually to prepare some good stuff for you. We have new strats coming. Uh, some more exotic ones. Also, we will launch soon the governance tokens ones. And also we are working quite actively to enable getting some of those option strats on layer two so that uh, everyone can benefit from it with a low gas fees. So, yeah. Yes. Just to kind of recap our sort of the trajectory we followed. I mean, we launched what, three, four, 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 maybe four months ago on these things. In the last month or so, we've seen a 50 something percent increase in, in TVL. Now we're sitting at about... 35, 35 million, which kind of puts us in the top, you know, top five options protocols in DeFi, I think. Something that's come up, a few people have mentioned recently is um, questions around the ETH put selling strategy. So a lot of people don't actually realize, but this is all denominated in stable coins. So, I mean, right now it's basically offering people a way to get up, you know, 100% plus yield on USDC, USDT, DAI, whatever. Huber, do you want to just explain very briefly on, on how the ETH put selling strat works? Because uh, I think a lot of people are still kind of missing this opportunity. Yeah, sure. No, it's a, it's a good point. We've been having some discussion on maybe a, a rebranding of this strategy because we have a lot of feedback that people are pretty sure it's denominated in ETH, which makes sense because like ETH is the first word uh, of the title, right? Um, however... For these kind of strategies, the collateral you, you need to put cannot be in ETH, right? Because if, it's, if ETH goes to zero, then you don't have any collateral to pay your option. So that's why put options are collateralized by stable coins. So this particular strat is very good for uh, you know, stable coin farming because you, you have this APY of selling puts. We try to stay uh, quite conservative on this. So we generally get like an APY around, say, 30, 35% on the option selling part. Then take your collateral and we farm our passive frag strategy, which is already like our highest yield passive strategy. So you get an additional like 30% APY on this one. And then you can take your LP token on frax to put it in the frax gauge. So you get an additional like, 60% APY on this. And at some point, we might also include some exit incentives uh, in the frax gauge. So all of this is going to give like crazy APYs to stable coins with a higher risk than just like farming on curve. i give you that. But still, I think the idea of this is enabling option strategies with a, a risk reward, which is biased in favor of the user. So glad to hear your feedback on, on this strat. It's, it, I think one, one problem we have with this strat is that it's quite gas expensive to do the full process. So normally, Frax is about to launch a, a new version of, their, of the gauges. So they should be able to, I mean, the, the new one are supposed to be less gas expensive. So hopefully you'll be able to benefit from this strat for a lower cost. Amazing. And so, you know, we've seen a lot of growth on the, the options side. I think something we haven't really been talking about quite as, as much is, is kind of our, um, our performance on the staking side of thing. We've kind of, as far as, as far as we know, we have one of the only kind of one-stop shops for staking as a service. So we've grown EVL there to what, around half a billion, I think, which kind of puts us in the same kind of orders of magnitude away from the big plays like Lido and stuff. Hitachi, maybe do you want to talk a little bit about some of the our achievements on the staking side of things? Yeah, sure. Hello, everyone. Very nice to be here. So just to give a little bit of an introduction. So I'm a 
Nick Dow been there since the beginning with with some of you probably through the wars for like eleven months. And yeah, so I think uh, just to, just before we dive into the staking, one thing which I wanted to say on the options, actually, it's quite quite impressive since the beginning. We've uh, we've we've been extremely successful in both our put and call selling and offering actually the best APY on the market. For realized gains on ETH um, and the Frax put, which is which is like pretty incredible. We've hit 35 million TVL. That actually puts us, as Johnny said, in the top five. And one of the best ways to, to measure this performance has been the huge demand for the caps. So if you know how the strategy works, week to week, the vault is essentially locked so that the option sales can be processed to market makers. And, and during that period, no one can deposit, but there's also a cap. So there's a maximum amount of deposits that can enter the strategy ever. And we've consistently had, had you know, demand to to increase those caps. We recently increased, I think, to like 10,000 ETH. Is that, is that right, Johnny? For, for the option strategies? Yeah, I'm just checking now. It's seven. I think 000. it's seven seven thousand. Yeah, yeah. seven thousand. And for for BTC, we've got three hundred BTC, which we've actually almost hit. Um, and then for Frax, we've got fifteen million Frax. So yeah, going going good. And you know, we've got a few exciting things coming to that end as well. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen the the great squeeze, etc. Alpha leaks. We won't say too much on that. But yeah, that's that's kind of the options looking. Great. And with regards to staking, I mean, it's arguably even looking better. About sort of five or six months ago, we, we realized that beyond Lido, there weren't really many solutions offering staking as a service. And actually, we, we, we started this with, well, Julian started this many, many years ago, and he wrote his white paper, if you guys ever saw the state capital white paper. So this has been this has been you know a long time dream with the team and and we've worked to that end to offer some of the first validators on Solana, Avalanche, Elrond, Harmony, and and that's reflected in our in our TVL right. So for our validators, <clears throat> we're consistently performing really really well, which keeps our stakers happy. Um, but beyond that, we've got something like five hundred million, uh, which is half half a billion, which is like insane to think about, delegated to our validators, which actually puts us second uh, in terms of validators uh, within DeFi offering this kind of service. And of course, second only to Lido. And recently, if you guys saw our tweet, we've um, completed our application process to to get onto Lido as an ETH2 staker. So hopefully that's, you know, long, long may it continue. Yeah, that's, I think, I think that's looking really, really promising for staked out. Obviously, that's generating a lot of ease which in the end is attributed back to SDT holders. So yeah, like, I mean, looking quite promising, but you know, we can always improve. We've got a few exciting things coming in terms of the UI and improving the UX around staking and managing your staking position all from, you know, one place, which is, I'd say, one of the strengths which we have offering a nice UI. So keep an eye out for that. Um, that's, uh, that's I think, I think most of the alpha which I can leak with regards to staking now at least but there's a there's a few exciting things coming with with regards to like the rush and various incentives and you know multi-chain so yeah looking looking quite good i think our arbitrage strategy is still probably one of the best yielding in all of DeFi, which is which is pretty cool and it's it's been sustained for a few months now so if you haven't seen that yet you know you should uh, you should go check that out as well yeah, just to for anyone who's not familiar with the the arbitrage strat, so we launched this in conjunction with our NFTs. So you do need a Tamil or Leviathan NFT to to participate, but you can go and check it out on the strategies tab. And there's a there's a premium section up top. It's STT only, so you you will need STT to deposit. But yeah, the the, the APY since inception is about seven hundred fifty percent. I think I think current APY is about a hundred and fifty. So yeah, as Satoshi mentioned, it it, it has been a, a big win for everyone in that strategy. Just just want to quickly, sorry, just dive in. Don't just, you know, take our word for it. This is not some kind of shill event. <laughs> you can you can go on the dashboard and go to state data analytics, where you can see a lot of this as well as the Q3 report, which is a, a big part of the initiative around us, you know, increasing transparency and, and enabling everyone to learn more about what we're building on a day to day basis. So yeah, definitely check that out. Right, and and just on that on that train of thought, the option strategies actually have. If you go onto the tiles, you can scroll down and see historical performance now, which is quite cool. So you can actually, so for example, on the ETH covered call strategy, if you scroll down, you'll see 
options sale history, you can scroll down and you can see every single week what the premium was and can kind of you can actually see the transactions on Ether scan as well. So just on that kind of transparency um, front. Maybe we can now, you know, have a little bit of a chat about some of the things that we're excited about that are coming up. Hubert, would you like to, to mention anything on that front? So, yes, as you guys know, we've mentioned it several times in the Telegram and Discord groups. We are working on a new architecture for the DAO. This is like our number one focus right now. It takes a bit of time, but we're getting there. So the idea that uh, we will have a new new PPS, that's really like the, the number one stone that uh, that we'll have. This new PPS primary work will enable having a, a liquid exit uh, from the, the PPS, a higher APY, which won't be paid in SDT, but rather with other kind of rewards. We will, uh, it will be also replicable quite easily on other protocols which have same kind of economics. So, so that's really like one cornerstone. Then we also, I mean, we learned a lot also from, you know, the market evolved, etc. cetera. Uh, Convex did a pretty good thing in, in leading the way for farming without dumping. So uh, we will also like enable this. Our strategy won't be auto-compounded uh, anymore, but users will have the opportunity to stake automatically their CRV, or FXS rewards or whatever in uh, the PPS, uh, the RSDT in the sanctuary, this kind of stuff. So this will be pretty cool. Also, there will be new tokenomics around SDT that should bring more more use cases, more traction, and should be quite attractive. I mean, all of this is looking quite good. Happy to take any question around that. The cornerstone of, the, of this new architecture will be that we want to be more transparent, decentralized, so it will be like full open source. Uh, we will try to onboard community on some tasks, this kind of stuff, have a more active governance, etc. So we we'll really need you guys to uh, make this a success. But I think it, it's going to be really looking good. Just on that, actually, it's, uh, it's, there's some really exciting developments, particularly with regards to, you know, there's there's a lot of, a lot of new stuff going on around the curve wars and various lockers being launched and, you know, whitelist, etc. So we've uh, we've really been considering uh, a lot of that that data over the past two three months and building an architecture which is composable both for multi chain as well as incorporating this you know DeFi governance oriented kind of space that we're entering into which is which is really really cool I think with regards to transparency and formalizing decision making frameworks within the DAO there is a really good proposal which was built by the current contributors, explaining a little bit about how decisions are made within the DAO and how we actually build out the features and, and services which we're offering. That's on gov.stakedao.org, and it is SDIP9. So I, I definitely recommend anyone that's interested to learn about how we do what we do to check that out. It's SDIP9, so it's going to go up for voting, I think, tonight. So yeah, if you, if you have any XSDT or SDT, you know, go ahead, vote on it. And, and leave your comments on the proposal. It's um, it's something which can be iterated. So if you have any thoughts around organization, paying DAO contributors, uh, you know, delegated powers, anything like that, we, we really welcome more talented minds to work on this. So I'd, I'd definitely check that out. And and yeah, I mean, it's, it's exciting times. I, I don't want to share too much alpha because it will detract from the, from the announcement, but you know, we're really... I think, I think we're really proud of this because it's it's something which should evolve the DeFi space, I think, at least within our own little circle and, and possibly even beyond. I think you raised some kind of important points and, and ideas. And, you know, there's, it's it's been a hectic kind of and productive year. Hitachi, do you want to talk a little bit about, like, since, you, you know, you've been with the DAO since day one, I mean... You know, what's your experience kind of been in terms of, yeah, the culture and, and, and kind of the, the trajectory? For sure. Yeah. I mean, I think it's been it's been a crazy journey. It's hard to believe it's almost been like a year. And it's, it's like beautiful to see the, the thing that we've created, the experiences which we've gone through. Not all, you know, it's not it's not all been rosy and beautiful. Of course, we've had we've had challenges along the way, but it's been really important to, to learn, at least for myself what it means to work for a DAO and, and how to coordinate a team and, you know, how to incentivize people, deal with different challenges. I mean, 
as as you all know, with um, you know every every DAO has its own challenges, and we've 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 gone through our own ones. But I think now we've really reached a robust structure for decision making. Um, I think so, particularly given the discussions which we've had in in previous governance posts, which I mentioned, we we talk a lot about how we come to a decision. One of the things which I'm really proud of, and and why, to be honest, I think. In general, DeFi, but but particularly Stake DAO, is is one of the DAOs pushing forward this this way of incentivizing people to contribute as against the old way of working, which is like you have a boss, you you, you do what they say. You it's less about finding the right answer, but doing things in the quote unquote right way. So so at Stake DAO, we have we we really do try and maintain a flat structure. So naturally, this has its you know advantages and disadvantages. There are times when you need to be a little bit more agile, but there are also times when all of us, creatives, engineers, business development people, people more focused on, I guess, like the community side of things, we, we all come together and we try and make a decision through an open forum, which leads to, in my opinion, more robust decisions because you have different points of view all contributing. And, and it's really one of the things which I love about the DAO. Based out of that, you get like a merit- meritocratic sort of reward framework which comes out of that um you also i think we've really fostered this culture where you don't have uh like this person has the title of a manager so i need to respect his opinion you you have more of a take every idea as it comes and and evaluate it for its worth not it's not tied to the person and you know the more often that you have ideas which are good for the DAO, that kind of builds out your own reputation but it's not formalized in a in a role like official role like manager so i think that's actually one of my favorite parts about working at the dow it, it continuously keeps me on my toes as well because you know there's no it, you're kind of out in the open so there's no uh, there's nothing to like lean against or hide behind like you know i joined a year ago so my idea is more important and my my idea is more uh, correct than someone who joined like a week ago we don't have any of that which i think is really really beautiful and one of the reasons why I think, in general, uh, DeFi is just going to overtake TradFi, but in particular, why do I don't think that I'll ever leave Stake DAO? To be very honest, like this is yeah, this is my home, and I feel like I found a tribe of like-minded people motivated by finding the best solution. So yeah, that's that's I think you know I could talk about this all day, but I think I think that's that's enough for now. I think at that juncture, it would be super interesting to hear. Huber, about your experience of ripping the handbrake on from your TradFi career and, and just going full into the deep end into DeFi. I'd be curious to hear about that. Uh, I don't know. It's, everyone has his own path to DeFi, right? Uh, for me, I came from TradFi. I, I mean, I, I got to know Julien uh, in a car sharing a very, very long time ago. So then it's really strange way to, to get into DeFi, right? But uh, yeah, one year ago, I was still a, an investment banker. Um, now I'm, I'm doing I'm being a DJ. I'm pretty much liking it. I'm pretty sure this is uh, very hopeful because like a lot of talent should come to DeFi and make it more and more. Yeah, the, the, the place to be. We're pretty glad to be here while it's still uh, uh, not the, the, the one place where everyone wants to go at the end of their business school. Still a bit the Eldorado, right? <laughs> but yes, no, it's gonna, it's, it's all very positive. Maybe, uh, Johnny, shall we throw some questions? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we've kind of thrown a lot of information out there. Like, we'd like to, to kind of open up the floor. So, if anyone has any questions, feel free to shoot. This is what these, these forums are, are for. So, whatever it may be around strategies, current products, existing products, upcoming products, feel free to kind of raise your hand and we'll, we'll feel the question from you. Deepak, I think you, you have a question. Hey, I, hey first of all, a uh, very big fan of the work you guys do, actively engage in the community. So I have two questions. One is deal with lobbies. I mean, I'm trying to read about it, but with my less knowledge, I think I'm not getting the idea about it. My second question is regarding the premium strategy. Are you guys planning to launch more of them in coming future? Thanks. Atashi, do you want to take this one? Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's a good question. I think 
Nobis, it, it seems is is like uh, from from what I gather is like some Olympus fork or like an approved fork. I don't know if it's called like a spoon or not. I've, I've seen a lot of bitter stuff around it. I believe their focus is on you know decentralizing curve locking protocols that have integrated curve locking governance mechanisms. The whole idea, uh, I believe, is to ensure that you know there's no one party or one DAO that can control or like do a hostile takeover of another DAO. So the the altruistic mission is like kind of cool. I think it's very like native to, to crypto and definitely aligns with some of the morals which I have. But I think that they've, you know, it's it's an important problem to solve, which no one has really solved as such. With regards to stake DAO, I know that there are some people who have contributed to stake DAO in the past and currently who are also either advising or um, working on on their team, which is cool. We've got open channels with the DAO. I think so far we've had a couple of proposals to see how the two DAOs can collaborate together. I believe SDIP8 was the one which enabled Stake DAO to build a position in Lobbyist. As of now, we haven't built any position in Lobbyist. But I think I think in the future, when obviously it makes sense in terms of our revenues and, and maintaining the best interests of SDT holders, we, we probably can. I think what they're doing is cool, but yeah, remains remains to be seen a little bit. In terms of how they could benefit us, I think they, they, they talk a lot about enabling users to retain their governance power. So, of course, we've got like the V3 coming, which has some, some interesting, some, some very new things for DeFi, actually. So I think, you know, depending on how their community sees it, then we, we could possibly do something. They did mention about like helping to maintain the peg. Of course, we have, you know, SDVE curve where we're going to have a, a Frax locker. We're very close with the Frax team. So I think there's many, many different avenues for collaboration, but it seems like early days. I'd, I'd love to get on a call with them, actually. So far, it's just been like a few messages. And yeah, find out, find out more. I mean, if you guys have any ideas as well, you know, that's exactly what the governance forum is for. So if you think there's anything cool that like lobbyists could do, we could coordinate a working group to, to create a proposal on their governance. I, I'm assuming they'll have one or even on our governance and, and, and see how it goes. Yeah. And, and I think with the, the other question was around premium strategies. So one of the most beautiful things since we launched the arbitrage strategy was it really validated one of the core value propositions of Stake DAO in the very beginning. If you guys remember, you know, we had, um, we had, a, we had a couple of exciting premium strategies. Uh, one of them has been delivered, actualized, and is delivering value on a consistent basis. So I think it can be assumed to be a success. Um, we are iterating on on new ones as well, which will be out. But you know, because they are premium strategies, we're really taking our time with them, ensuring that the code is proper, the the architecture is is composable for the future, as well as it's something that can consistently deliver value. So yes, absolutely, they are still on the cards. They are under development, and we'll try and integrate it in the same way to benefit those that are most active within our community to reward them. You know, such as the the NFTs, how we integrated them with the arbitrage strategy, and and yeah, I'll go from there. I don't know if you had anything to add, Cuba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you've all seen that I was quite pushing for lobbies uh, in the Telegram chat, etc. Because. Uh, I think there is a, an opportunity for us to grab. And actually, I, uh, the more I see it, the more I think it's, it's a great opportunity for us, actually. Because at the beginning, they were saying we're going to decentralize DeFi, which obviously in the context of curve wars sounds quite promising and quite interesting concept, right? And then, because you, you, I mean, you know all that we are a bit like the last one of the curve wars right now <laughs> behind Convex and, and Yearn. And this V3 should be a great opportunity to come back in the game, have a more a more attractive, uh, you know, curve locking mechanism, etc. So I, I really think this is going to be a game changer. But also this lobbyist willing to decentralize curve walls is really something that we could, if we show them our support. And that's why, I mean, I really asked uh, every homies, which we have in our community to, to vote for them. And also that's why we propose SDIP8 that I think if we build a strong relationship with them, if their community uh, gets uh, to know us, this might be a great opportunity for TakeDAO. Thanks, Deepak. Maybe I think one kind of key message that maybe we can kind of iterate here, Hubert or Hitachi, if you want to explain this, is is kind of the 
the premise of Lobbyist, what they're trying to achieve with regards to the the situation with Curve Finance. I think maybe a lot of people are not aware of that. Do you guys want to expand on that? I'm following this uh, a bit, uh, quite closely, actually. <laughs> actually, good. It's super interesting. Anyway, I think they changed a bit the narrative. But at the beginning, and that's why also we were supporting them that much, they were really saying now Convex has a majority power over Curve. So basically now Curve is a subsidiary of Convex. And this is very dangerous on a regulatory point of view for Curve. And also it's not the purpose of DeFi to to have like this kind of hostile takeover, right? And as you guys know, Julien is uh, advising lobbies and so uh, also uh, some people from uh, Curve some people from Frax, etc. So they, they, I mean, they, they listed like the whole bunch of people who were supporting the, the project at the beginning. But like, they were all like quite positive on the fact that those curve looking mechanisms were great to bootstrap a project, achieve quick decentralization. But in the long term, it had this weakness that if you build a perfect wrapper of the token, then you can just take over the power of the of the protocol. I think everyone would benefit from decentralization, even Convex, for example. I mean, it's in no interest for Convex to centralize Curve, obviously, because they built on it. So yes, I think it was a really great narrative. They suffered a lot of FUD uh, on, on the market because of that. Euron and Convex really attacking them, which was uh, quite interesting. I think they didn't... I think Euron... And Convex didn't see the opportunity there to bring in more service, which I think is good for us. But I mean, you've seen also like they, they had a vote. We tried uh, to to get in the next bonds, uh, but we didn't. <laughs> we didn't make it this time. Hopefully next time. But Convex made it, I think. So there's no bad blood between them. It'll be okay. But yeah, it was quite interesting. And now they've changed a bit their narrative to be like more like a, a governance go to place for DeFi. Which is which is cool too. Pretty sure this could be interesting for us too. Amazing. Thank you so much for um that explanation, Hubert. I think we have probably ten ten minutes, fifteen minutes left, guys, before we have to wrap things up. Guys, please feel free to at, at this point to, to to ask anything that's on your mind. This one is regarding the the tab the way we do the trade. So I see like that has been integrated with the Paraswap. When we buy or sell, there is a lot of uh, slippage. So is there any roadmap in which just set a, like we can use a limit order or something there on a purpose basis so that buyer cannot get slippage over there? Like, and it's an excellent question. As you might have heard, uh, Julien mentioned uh, a lot of time, uh, uh, StakeDAO is also like, uh, what, what he calls a decentralized exchange. So basically like a, a place where you can do pretty much everything like buy, sell, also invest in strategies, potentially borrow one day, etc. Uh, but all the trading part is really core uh, to the identity. And so currently you can just buy and sell, but we, um, we are working on an improvement where Limit orders, leverage, perpetuals, this kind of stuff uh, would be integrated. Uh, it won't be part of the, the big new arch that we are going to release, but it's, it's something we have already started working on, notably with perpetual. And it's, it's, it should be really interesting. And I think it, it should, yeah, include limit orders and also like two times leverage, the kind of stuff. One question regarding liquidity provision. As I understand, Orm is buying our liquidity right now. Couldn't we do that ourselves too with, say, ETH from the uh, NFT sales or something like that? Yeah, I think it's it's actually a very good idea. But to be frank, I actually had this idea in May, I think, when I just joined StakeDAO. <laughs> I, I did a presentation about that, like taking proceeds from performance fee, pairing it with uh, SDT from inflation and building our own liquidity. In the end, it, we went for Olympus bonds. Uh, what we can see with Olympus bonds is that it, it's been very successful, especially at the start. Now we have like just over $1 million of liquidity, which is uh, a very good chunk. I think we have like more than, uh, we have nearly like 40% of the sushi pool, which is really cool. However, we are currently running some analysis around 
the cell pressure that this results in and understanding how efficient it is and also maybe if we can find other uh, parallel uh, solutions to achieve owning liquidity. But I think indeed it from the, the, the NFT sales are actually quite useful for the gas cost and this kind of stuff. But we could take a part of it indeed to pair it with liquidity. I think there is actually a proposal right now in governance for something like that. And I think it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, yes, we, this is typically the kind of question that we should raise in governance, discuss, etc., and and vote on and probably like get going with. I think it would make a lot of sense to uh, say for a, a, a given period, say we take, I don't know, one SDT per block plus all the performance fee and we put it in our liquidity and in the long run we stop incentivizing liquidity, which is just like, because incentivizing liquidity, um, even if people don't sell, uh, the SDT goes back in the pool and then even, yeah, even if those AP providers are not like, Mercenary is selling all SDT. It still results in a higher amount of SDT in the in the pool. So that's why I think it, it's important we we find efficient ways to acquire our liquidity. But yeah, totally agree with you, Deepak. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, if you haven't seen, we we have a our latest governance proposal is live on Snapshot for voting. So this is around ratifying the decision making structures and operational processes of the DAO and essentially aims to increase transparency. So we will be sharing the link on Twitter pretty shortly if, you, if you'd like to, to take a look and, and have a vote. The, the link to the actual governance proposal is there as well. So this is really important. You know, we, we want everyone to have a, a more kind of transparent culture, I would say, and kind of have a stake in, in the DAO. So please do vote or even just leave comments on the proposal if you don't have any um, STT available for voting. Yeah, guys, thank you so much to everyone who's joined this call. We will be having more of these on a regular basis so that people can, you know, kind of ask away and, and we can kind of share some of the, the, the things that we're working on behind the scenes. Hubo and Hatashi, thanks a lot. And, and Deepak, also thanks a lot to you, man, for, for jumping on and into the spotlight and, and um, asking questions that were very salient. So thanks again, man. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right, guys. Until next time. See you soon. Bye.